Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, so now we continue. Statement 16. Statement 16 says, and so we're almost at the end of this chapter, uh, by the way. So statement 16 says, if one does not accomplish the cause, it is impossible that qualities will arise. Uh, so this is uh, a statement uh, and uh, Shirab Jungne then arranged it for this statement to come right after the statement that says all qualities arise from meditative equipoise. And so we have looked at uh, that statement already. Uh, statement 16 will help clarify uh, this same issue about meditative equipoise. So, you know, as I said, uh, there are some very technical uh, terms being used uh, here. And so there's this, this uh, some of the technical terms used here is about, uh, so when you are in meditative equipoise uh, and then post meditation, and then what is the mind uh, kind of uh, immersed in uh, while in meditative equipoise, uh, basically emptiness. So in response to those who say, you know, uh, no qualities whatsoever uh, is present when the mind is immersed in emptiness, Kyuba Rinpoche makes the statement that actually all these good qualities, uh, when they arise, they arise from meditative equipoise. So then more specifically, what kind of meditative equipoise? The meditative equipoise of the mind uh, dwelling in uh, the realization of emptiness and the mind uh, directly perceiving the emptiness nature of all persons all phenomena and so that is that meditative equipoise so now here uh, 16 mm, it's very interesting because uh, in case then you think, oh, so does that mean that all I need to do is just to meditate uh, on emptiness and then all the qualities will magically appear? Also not the case. <laughs> so this is very interesting. A, a very important statement to come, uh, 16 after 15. If you just look at 15, you might think, uh, oh, Kimba Rinpoche is saying, uh, oh, just meditating on uh, the emptiness that you have realized, uh, the emptiness that you have realized, uh, the nature of mind that has been pointed out by the Lama, by the Guru, uh, you just uh, immerse your mind in that, and then all the qualities, right, would uh, miraculously, magically appear. Uh, Kimba Rinpoche says, but that is not Gilbert Rinpoche's view. Because elsewhere, Gilbert Rinpoche says, which is this statement 16. But if one does not accomplish the cause, meaning if you don't create the causes, then it is impossible that the qualities will arise. So he doesn't emphasize, or, or he wants to avoid, you could say, Giving the giving us the impression that because we say Buddha qualities are innate, right? The Buddha qualities are innate to our Buddha nature. Therefore, all we need to do is just wait, wait for them to turn up, or uh, that by clearing, uh, simply by just clearing mental defilements, right? qualities will just turn up. He also doesn't want us to take this passive attitude towards uh, these innate Buddha qualities. He also emphasizes the importance of employing uh, many different skillful means, many different methods uh, to create the causes for the arising of these Buddha qualities. So yes, there is uh, somewhat of a tension here. And in fact, if you 
you know, don't have much faith or confidence in Kyoba Rinpoche or this tradition, you might even say, this is a contradiction. On the one hand, you say, you know, Buddha qualities are innate, are present. On the other hand, you say, you have to create the causes for them to arise. Yes, maybe, yeah, if you want to strictly use logic, you would say, oh, this, this is contradictory logic, this cannot be the case. But again, you know, this is not a tradition. And I would argue even the Buddha himself doesn't use logic, you know, in such a rigid way yeah, to account for all the system. But rather, everything Buddha gave uh, is for us to overcome our suffering, overcome our confusion. Then everything that he gave uh, for the purpose of overcoming suffering, overcoming confusion, uh, uh, in a way you could say that he, 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 he made them up, these methods. But he did not make these methods up independent of or ignoring uh, the way things are. Uh, so these skillful means, these methods, uh, were, were devised, yes, were devised by the Buddha, uh, and then further used and devised and adapted by the lineage masters, the Mahasiddhas. But all of that is done from the state of having realized the nature of phenomena, how things are, how things come to be. How things are and how things appear, uh, these two aspects. Uh, they see clearly without any confusion or mistake uh, as to how things are. How things are is they are abiding uh, in the state of emptiness. How things appear, they appear uh, by way of interdependence, karmic causality, cause and effect, uh, and they play out that way. So Buddhas have seen that. So based on that, then Buddha, uh, then the Buddhas, uh, the Mahasiddhas, the great uh, masters, uh, then give us the medicine that we need for our particular ills, or for our particular confusions. Yeah. So in this case, you know, uh, while statement 15 says, you know, all the qualities, when they arise, they arise within this meditative equipoise. But before you think, you know, oh, all we have to do is to sit there uh, and let the mind just remain immersed uh, in emptiness, uh, in empty nature of the mind in the selfless nature of mind. Oh, then all the Buddha qualities will turn up. Uh, qualities of compassion, uh, loving kindness, mm, patience, skill, uh, ability to, 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 to be able to guide students, for example. Uh, then you think, oh, all these qualities will just turn up. Mm. Mm, ability to use words uh, that can convey the meaning knowing when to use which words or which methods, all these uh, are the qualities. Having patience, having good interdependence, having sufficient wealth uh, in order to support others uh, in their, you know, practice seeking of dharma all these are the qualities and so when we see like a great teacher you know like such as his holiness the dalai lama you know and people like that how come they have so many people so how come so many people are attracted to them feel a closeness to them even they never met them in person now, these are part of those Buddha qualities that we're talking about. The power to attract, the power to give the right teaching, the right message. Otherwise, we might say, you know, like they have chemistry. 
but they seem to have chemistry with so many pe people, so many beings, you know. And then some of them, you know, have a lot of wealth that they can use. And some, you know, no matter how hard they try to try to accomplish something, it doesn't happen because not enough of these Buddha qualities are ripening. Now, footnote, okay. Elsewhere, Kyoba Rinpoche also warns against uh, seeming success uh, as the work of Maras. Uh, the Maras, the greater and lesser Maras, you know, in the Jinda Mani Shastra, for example, says, you know, the great Maras will bring you a lot of quote unquote success. Uh, and then if you get carried away, then gone. <laughs> but otherwise, you know. Uh, all these qualities in 16 it says they don't uh, arise uh, if the appropriate causes uh, have not been created uh, so then you say well if these Buddha qualities are innate uh, as Kyobaran Muche also says then what do you mean that you need to create causes for uh, these Buddha qualities uh, these good qualities to arise. Well, it means uh, one way to understand that is they're innate as in they're naturally there. Uh, so from that perspective, you don't need to think, oh, I need to go find them from somewhere else. I need to go far away to bring them here. They're innate as in they exist within you. You have those uh, qualities already. But simply knowing that you have those qualities without doing anything about it, won't, they will not um, be useful. So doing something about it is what here is called uh, creating uh, the cause or the causes, accomplishing the causes. If you don't plant the seed, if you don't create those causes, even the innate good qualities will not arise. So this is statement 16. Again, statement 16, yeah, it says, if one does not accomplish the particular cause, then that specific quality that you're looking for will not arise. In Rinchen Changchup's commentary, he tells us that this is further emphasized in Statement 42 in the Auxiliary chapter, the miscellaneous chapter, that says all results of separation have causes. Separation is talking about okay. to separate from uh, the mm, adventitious stains, uh, to separate from uh, the mental defilements. So not only uh, Buddha qualities that are innate, yeah, innately present, naturally present, uh, although naturally present, although innately present, causes need to be created for them to arise. Then, as for mental defilements, afflictive emotions that are not innate, that are not naturally present, but only temporarily present, only uh, present uh, uh, as a mistake, right? Then with regards to that, statement 42, Two of chapter eight says, and to be free from those, to be free from those that are not natural, not innate, not part of our nature, we also need to create causes. Uh, meaning, you need to clear them. You need to purify them. If you don't make effort to clear and to purify that which is not part of your nature, 
they will still obstruct you. Yeah? They will still obstruct you. So you cannot say, you know, oh, it's all illusory. <laughs> then just say, oh, I know it's illusory. That illusory bus, you know, you walk out on the street when it's coming down the road, it will still hit you. And then you are illusorily taken to the hospital, illusorily, you know, lots of surgery and lots of people trying to stop you from dying. Yes, it's illusory, but, you know, it doesn't mean uh, you don't feel, you don't experience the suffering that arises illusorily. Likewise, uh, the happiness that arises uh, illusorily uh, also need causes to arise. Yeah? So, let's look at Kambu Kumpel's uh, commentary. Moreover, due to genuine meditative equipoise, during the post-meditation, one will expel the poisons of a bias, compassion, and so forth, and the clinging to apparent reality. Since phenomena appear but are without essence, one will not despise even the subtlest practices of methods such as compassion, generosity, and so forth, but will accumulate as much merit as one can. Thereby, the wisdom of meditative equipoise will increase more and more. Uh, so here, Kimbo Kumpel wants to emphasize, you know, like not only are these uh, uh, methods, uh, uh, these qualities uh, that arise from these methods, uh, qualities of compassion, generosity, and so forth, uh, not only um, they, 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 as you increase them, as you cultivate the practices that increase these things, they will further enhance your meditative equipoise. Your ability to immerse your mind in this habituating the emptiness nature of all phenomena, the emptiness nature of all persons. Thus, if one does not exactly accomplish the cause, the two accumulations in union, which is the accumulation of wisdom and the accumulation of merit, to practice them in union without contradiction, without separation, then it is impossible that the qualities of the path and fruition of liberation from the two obscurations will arise. So then we come back to, what is it? It's the practice of the two accumulations and keep these two practices inseparable. Don't separate them. Don't think, oh, I'm just going to meditate on emptiness, on the nature of my mind, and I don't, I'm not going to do any of the other things. Also, don't think, you know, oh, I'm just going to accumulate merit and forget wisdom of emptiness. The two should be practiced together. It is said, as long as one does not gather the two excellent accumulations, one will not attain the two excellent kayas, the two excellent uh, bodies, the dharmakaya and the rupakaya. You say, wait, 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 I thought there are three kayas. Yes, yes. But sometimes it's called the two kayas, as in Dharmakaya, Dharmakaya, of course, then Rupakaya includes both Sambhogakaya and Dharmanakaya. Dharmakaya arises from the wisdom cultivation, accumulation of wisdom. Sambhogakaya and Dharmanakaya, they arise, they, they, they arise from the accumulation of merit. Now, if you look at the Chodrak's uh, commentary, 
I think uh, it's it's not long, it's short. So let's look at that because I think his commentary huh, further clarify this. He says, uh, in in response to people who claim that all the good qualities uh, also arise without any causes, meaning without any causes beyond uh, meditating on nature of mind. Then Cuba responds, if one has not established the cause, then all the qualities uh, or none of the qualities uh, will arise. It is not necessary to mention the causes for the introduction to the mind alone. Meaning, uh, even to be introduced to the nature of mind, uh, and then you can rest uh, and immerse yourself in this meditative equipoise. Even that requires causes. Uh, otherwise, if there aren't causes, uh, part of those causes, a lama, a guru with realization and skill. Mm -hmm. Then a disciple uh, with uh, enough merit and wisdom accumulated. Uh, then these two having a karmic connection, having karmic chemistry uh, meeting. Uh, so there you see how right, the causes are necessary. Then furthermore, he says, it is taught that those who dwell on the Bodhisattva stages too must effect the benefit of beings. That is, they have to engage in the cause that accomplishes inconceivable qualities. In other words, the great waves of conduct of the two accumulations. So for uh, the two accumulations are important if we were to you know, actually have the qualities manifest. So then he raises a hypothetical objection. He says, question, does this not contradict your statement that all the qualities arise solely from meditative equipoise? Last statement, statement 15. Answer, it is not contradictory. Here, meditative equipoise is practiced within emptiness and is not accomplished in subsequent consciousness that involves grasping as real meaning uh, meditative equipoise is necessarily that uh, meditative equipoise on non-grasping uh, so post meditation if your post meditation has grasping uh, then it's not It's not the place where qualities can arise. Anyway, he says, for example, even though the power of obtaining what is necessary and what is hoped to appear exists in a precious jewel, it is the case that one must wipe it three times and so forth, attach it to the tip of a victory banner and pray to it. And so what is he talking about? He's, he's, he's referring to uh, this thing that we always uh, come across uh, in, in, in these Buddhist uh, uh, texts, the wish-fulfilling jewel, the wish-fulfilling jewel. Uh, so like the Lojong tradition, right, uh, talks about the wish-fulfilling jewel, uh, like uh, mm, sentient beings are more precious uh, than wish-fulfilling jewels. Right? Then what are wish-fulfilling jewels? Uh, wish-fulfilling jewel, it is said that, you know, uh, first of all, you need to have the ability to recognize that that particular thing, that particular stone that is just laying there in the mud, uh, in fact, is not an ordinary stone. It's a wish fulfilling jewel. So you need to have uh, the ability to recognize. Then after you take that stone, hmm, that to many other people just looks like any eh, normal stone, but you, uh, 
you recognize, oh, actually, that is a special stone. That's called a wish fulfilling stone. But even after you get that, it said that then you have to prepare the stone. You have to clean it. You have to wipe it three times. You know, in some sources, they give even more details. Uh, you have to bathe it like with milk. You have to bathe it with saffron. You have to bathe it with, you know, uh, yogurt, you know, massage and clean and polish and everything. Then not only that, then you have to put on top of a victory banner. Uh, you cannot just put on the floor. You put on your bed. You put on your table. No, you have to put on top of a victory banner. Uh, that means a special, very precious thing put on top of that. Then, you know, you have to circumambulate. Uh, you have to make offerings of flowers, of incense, of light. And then you say to the wish fulfilling jewel, please, I have this wish. Then it said the wish fulfilling jewel will give you, will fulfill your wish hmm, to bring what you want. So he says, likewise. Meditative equipoise is the wish fulfilling jewel meaning the mind immersed in the realization of emptiness of self emptiness of other emptiness of persons emptiness of phenomena that is the wish fulfilling jewel but if you don't recognize that it's the wish fulfilling jewel and you don't polish you don't clean you don't put on the victory banner you don't make offerings to it. In other words, you don't do the accumulation of merit. You don't cultivate compassion. You don't cultivate loving kindness. You don't cultivate generosity. You don't cultivate patience. You don't, and the six paramitas and all the different methods. Then it will not bring the results of a wish fulfilling jewel. Then another question, if one accomplishes a cause, is that not uh, subsequent consciousness? Answer, it is not. And it quotes, I'm without conceit of saying I'm in the meditative equipoise and then I rise from it. Therefore, it is necessary to accomplish the causes in the state where one does not deviate from meditative equipoise. So this is the important point. Yeah, the technical kind of like meditation, post meditation, or meditation and subsequent consciousness, they, you know, both you and I don't have enough kind of background in this kind of categories to really appreciate, right, the point here. But the point that I think both you and I can appreciate is this. Therefore, it is necessary to accomplish the causes in a state where one does not deviate. From meditative equipoise. Therefore, the intention is that the method of completing the two accumulations, while one does not deviate from meditative equipoise, is the profound point being made here. So, the importance of not deviating not straying from realizing nature of mind, of phenomena, and from within that, engage in, we call the 10,000 mirrored uh, acts of virtue. Continue to create virtue, create the causes of virtue uh, from within that. Uh, Rinchen Changchuk, Professor Zobich, uh, at the end he says, uh, uh, Rinchen Changchuk quotes this, yeah? quotes a sutra, first of all, uh, about uh, the arising of good qualities within meditative equipoise. Uh, he says this, by offering uh, within uh, the mind immersed in this equipoise uh, without straying from this realization, this understanding. So for you and me, you're like, uh, we don't have the realization yet, but at least, you know, having this understanding of emptiness, 
and making offerings from based on that understanding. So by offering within equipoise, a butter lamp to a stupa of the Buddha, one obtains the completely pure heavenly eye that perceives immeasurable Buddhas of the Ten Directions. So why offer lamps to a stupa? Because when we offer, if we know how to offer just one lamp, by abiding in this realization of emptiness, or if no realization, at least an intellectual understanding of emptiness, you know, then this offering bears greater fruit, have more impact, in other words. If you think bearing greater fruit sounds like you are being greedy, then you can say, will have greater impact. Many people, you know, especially in Asia, very good at making, creating merit. Almost like nothing else but just create merit. <laughs> making offering for this, offering for this, offering for this, you know. Anytime a temple needs to do a fundraising, all they have to say is, we have lighting lamps. Oh, you can collect lots of money. Oh, we are going to do this, we are going to do that, we are going to build another stupa, we are going to build another statue, you know. Never mind, there's already like, you know, 87 statues, you know. We're going to make another one. Oh, people give, you know. But if it is not done, you know, with this understanding of emptiness, this wisdom aspect, yeah, then the merit that is created is fragile. Anyway, but anyway, yeah, so then it goes on, he says, in a similar manner, by offering symbols, like symbols for ritual, if you offer a symbol, then you obtain the heavenly ear that constantly hears the Dharma. So why is it that some of us, you know, seems like Without trying too hard, you know, we have access to Dharma because we have created the causes. And the cause can be offering a pair of symbols to the monastery, to the stupa, to our guru, offering a butter lamp. Furthermore, by providing correct answers to one's field of offering, with the gentle speech that possesses the meaning, without verbal miserliness, any word one says affects the benefit of sentient beings. Uh, meaning, uh, the offering of kind speech uh, to those that you are helping, uh, even to those who are helping. Of course, if you offer it to his holiness, you know, someone great, you're always using very sweet words. Oh, here it's saying, you know, even offering to those who are relying on you. Huh? Without like, you know, hey, I'm giving you something, you just accept gratefully. But being kind to them, being gentle with them, this will benefit many beings. Similarly, the immeasurable individual virtuous dharmas of the path, such as samadhi and disciplined conduct, now, all these are the causes for the arising, arising of the resultant qualities that match the cause. So for certain results, certain specific causes are necessary. So that's why there's this kind of like uh, correspondence. Yeah? Offering light leads to clear seeing. Offering sound uh, leads to access to dharma. Offering food leads to health and stability of life. And so on and so forth. Then, Professor Sobish says, in Renjen Changchup's commentary on this uh, uh, statement, he, he refers to 
the subtitle of this important sutra called the Samadhi Raja Sutra. In one of the subtitles of the Samadhi Raja Sutra, there is this phrase called the nature of all phenomena, sameness hyphen proliferation. So the nature of all phenomena is sameness proliferation. Sameness, everything same. Proliferation meaning proliferate, you know, like differences. Sameness hyphen many differences. So this is said to be the nature of all phenomena. So here Ren Zheng Chanchu says, do you understand what this means? Sameness proliferation. Then he explains, he says, he explains that here sameness is exactly referring to this meditative equipoise, which is emptiness is the same nature, the same essence of all things. Emptiness, meditative equipoise, the mind immersed in this emptiness. And proliferation is the proliferation or the diversity of limitless causes. The limitless bodhisattva practices, the 10,000 bodhisattva deeds. Not just offering light, not just offering incense, not just offering symbols, not just offering flowers, not just offering clothing, but offering incenses of so many different substances, offering lights in so many different shapes and forms, offering food in so many you know, different tastes, offering symbols with so many different pitch, all those, yeah? are the proliferation. And he says, and this is precisely the very profound point of the Lord Dragumba's dependent origination. Right? The Lord Dragumba, Jigden Sumgan, Gyopa Rinpoche, that the Gyopa Rinpoche's teaching of dependent origination where emptiness and, which is the sameness, and proliferation, which is the infinite Buddha uh, bodhisattva practices, uh, are completely uh, intertwined. And so, in this prayer that we often repeat, you know, it's actually composed by Mi Pam, who lived the same time as Kempo Kumpel. That means in the last hundred years. This great Nima master, he called Jigden Sungun the master of interdependence, of dependent origination. Now, to call him the master of dependent origination uh, is to say, you know, Jigden Sungun has many, 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 many different methods. He could see, you know, if you have this kind of problem, this kind of obstacle, then the solution is to do this. If you have this, then do that. If you have that, do that. And how, how did Jigden Sumun come about having this kind of ability, this kind of power? From the two accumulations. Same for all of us. And you have to understand that the two accumulations do not, uh, like, uh, are not in conflict, you know. And so don't think, oh, only uh, wisdom is enough. Or, oh, only uh, doing a lot of things but those two come together. Sameness, proliferation. Emptiness, form, form is emptiness. So, so form is emptiness, 
Sometimes we we go too far in that formless emptiness. So then we stray into nihilism. Emptiness is form. Then we if we just hear that, we stray in eternalism. These are the two extremes. So generally, I will say, you know, Asian Buddhist is emptiness is form. So they they like all the forms, <laughs> busy, busy, busy with the form. Then Westerners or Western educated types is. Form is emptiness. Nihilism. Oh, everything is empty. Everything is empty. <laughs> Just want to think. You know. Not much confidence in the doings. <laughs> so then. We suffer mm -hmm. quietly. Uh, I'm thinking. <laughs> Asian Buddhists suffer running around. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. They're suffering. You can see running around. Western Buddhists suffering alone. They're stuck in nihilism, you know. Asian Buddhists are stuck in eternalism. And then actually, the teachings say, you know, if you need to be stuck in one of those, better stuck in eternalism than stuck in nihilism. Because nihilism, really. And then, at least if you're stuck in eternalism, you still have some kind of belief in cause and effect, you know. So then you are more careful about cause and effect. But if you are stuck in nihilism, you know, no, no shadow of cause and effect, even a little bit of it, no place for it, then it becomes a very dark place. So warning, those of you, you don't need to be literally a Westerner. But if you have this disease of a Western education, you know, uh, watch out, because we put so much trust in, you know, intellectual power. You think, I know, I know all of this. I'm very sophisticated. Then, sophisticated suffering. <laughs> so do more practices of, you know, the accumulation of merit, which is none other than acts of compassion, acts of loving kindness, acts of generosity. Yeah. And that's what they are, you know. Don't underestimate. Don't think, ah, I don't know, burning things for this spirit. You know. Of course, you cannot, you know, like burn sur for spirit. And then meanwhile, you know, when you see a hungry animal, a hungry person, you're like, no, 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 go away. <laughs> then that's inconsistent, you know. And of course, it's also true, you know, you know it's hard to solve, you know, the, the problem of hunger for the world. But within, you know, our daily moving around, we, we can see, you know, some people need help, some people need help this kind, that kind, we do, you know. But also don't say, oh, this sort of thing, I don't know, this is all. No, 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 like, make it all consistent, you know. Uh, to say, So to say, cover all your bases, you know. Uh, do sound, you know. But also, please, shower, you know. <laughs> do laundry also, you know. Then, then all levels, right? They, they, they correspond, you know. Then on the deeper level, right? Also remove mental defilements, you know. Clear, 
which is what sun means, clear, clear, clear the mental developments. Yeah? You can burn, you know, a mountain of, you know, incense. And it's not going to have much effect if you're not clear, you're not making efforts to clear mental defilements. Then your space, you know, if it's in a mess, you know, likely your mind is in a mess, your emotions are in a mess. Likely, not 100%. Likely. So anyway, now we'll do dedication. Sublime, precious, venerable, and glorious, rude, and lineage gurus, assembly of idam deities, buddhas, and bodhisattvas dwelling in the ten directions, and all assemblies of viras, viranis, yoginis, and dharginis, please heed me. May the virtues collected in the three times by me and the entirety of samsara and nirvana and the inherent root of virtue not reside in the eight worldly dharmas, the four causes of samsara and the resultant states of hearers and solitary realizers. And may all mother sentient beings, limitless as the sky, particularly those enemies who hate us, Obstructors who harm those who create obstacles, maras who mislead, and their mara retinues have happiness. Be separated from suffering and quickly attain the unsurpassed, perfect, and precious Bodhi. By the power of this vast root of virtue, may we benefit sentient beings with body, speech, and mind. May the afflictive thoughts of attachment, aversion, ignorance, pride, and jealousy not arise in my mind stream, may thoughts of name, fame, gain, respect, and so forth in this life not arise for even a moment with my mind stream, moistened by love, compassion, and bodhicitta. May I come under the care of virtue, spiritual friends, and having become as limitless as space, may I achieve the supreme attainment of Mahamudra in this very life. By the virtues collected in the three times by me and the entirety of samsara and nirvana and by the innate root of virtue, may I and all sentient beings quickly attain the unsurpassed, perfect, complete, precious Bodhi. Adios. <laughs>